Hi, in this video we're going to review the objectives from Chapter 1, which was um, picturing distributions with graphs. Here we had two types of data, categorical and quantitative, and we also looked at ways to chart categorical data, and that's usually with bar graphs and pie charts, and ways to chart quantitative data, which is with histograms and stem plots. We also spent quite a bit of time interpreting histograms. Um, so I'm going to just uh, briefly go over these uh, points so that you can be um, ready to apply them in the midterm. Right. We remember that there are two types of variables. They are quantitative or categorical. The quantitative variable is something that can be measured um, or counted for each individual, and then you can add, subtract, and average them. So typically, there are some things that, that can be measured, and they have a continuous range of values, such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, um, how tall you are, your age. Uh, your blood cholesterol, your weight, all those are types of quantitative variables. Just because something is a number, by the way, doesn't mean it's quantitative. A very good example is a social security number. That's not really quantitative because you, you can't average people's social security numbers. It wouldn't make any sense. Um, it, those are really quanti uh, categorical because they are um, labels, so they don't really count as quantitative variables, even though um, social security number is actually a number. Right? Right. The second type of variable is categorical, and so that basically means that um, something that falls into one of several categories, as the name implies. Um, so, for example, your blood type would can only be uh, one of eight different blood types. Um, it's A plus or minus, B plus or minus, etc. And so that's a categorical variable. You can't um, you can't average A and B blood type together. Those labels themselves are not something you can take the average of or add or subtract. Okay, and the same thing is um, uh, categorical is like your hair color, your ethnicity, and whether you paid income tax last year or not. The last one would just be a yes or no answer. All right, once you have categorical data, there are two main ways that we discussed that you can display them. One is a bar graph, and the other one is a pie chart. Um, which way to display them depends very much on what type of information you're trying to get across. Uh, the pie charts are um, displayed when um, everything is part of a whole. So when you everything adds up to 100% and you have no overlaps between your categories uh, that you counted, um, then you use a pie chart. Okay, and then. Um, at the bar graph, sometimes they're interchangeable. You can use a bar graph or a pie chart, but for a pie chart, the slices must be representing parts of a whole. So you have to convert all your numbers that you have into a percentage before you can use a pie chart. You can use a software like Excel, and that will create very good pie charts. I don't expect people to draw pie charts by hand. Um, I do expect people to draw a bar graph by hand on the exam. All right, ways to chart quantitative data. Now, this is a little more involved, um, and there are two ways to take quantitative data and chart them, histograms and stem plots. Okay, and you should be able to draw a histogram or a stem plot given some data. All right, um, here's a histogram uh, that we will look at. Uh, notice that the x-axis talks about the percentage of people Hispanic. And the y-axis talks about the number of states. So um, from the um, uh, graphic, you see that zip for 0 to 5 percent um, Hispanic population, there are a number of states, uh, around 27 states, that are uh, between 0 and 5 percent Hispanic. And you see that between 40 and 45 percent Hispanic, um, there's only one state, and that's New Mexico, and that's 42.1 percent Hispanic, and um, so on and so on. And then in the graph, it's indicated that um, 13 states have between 5 and 9.9 percent Hispanic residents. Now, you notice that the um, bottom axis, the percent Hispanic, are divided into equal subintervals. So it goes from 0 to 5. So everything in the first bar would be between 0 and 4.9. Then the second bar would be 5 to 9.9. 10 to 14.9, 15 to 19.9, etc. There should not be any overlaps between the bars because you don't want to count any data twice. Okay, so here's a quick question. 
how many states have less than 10% Hispanic residents? Well, to calculate that, you would um, estimate how many have between 0 and 5% Hispanic residents and how many have between 5 and 9.9. .9. That would be the second bar. So you would get um, 27 states with 0 to 4.9% and 13 states with 5 to 9.9%. So there are 40 states altogether with less than 10% Hispanic resident. I'm going to continue the graphing of quantitative data. Here we're going to look at how to make a stem plot. You're given a um, set of original data here with the um, numbers as shown. Now to make a stem plot, you first need to take each observation and turn it into a stem consisting of all but the final rightmost digit and the leaf, and the leaf is that final digit, right? Stems can have as many digits, but the leaf can only contain a single digit, so that's really important to remember, right? So you write the stems in a vertical column with the smallest value at the top, and you draw a vertical line at the right of this column, right? So let us see next how we can um, uh, make this data into a stem plot, right? And then you're going to write each le leaf in the row to the right of the stem, in increasing order out from the stem. So here we are. The first one, um, the stem is going to be 0, and the leaves are 9 and 9. So these are all two-digit numbers. So everything in the stem is going to be from 0 all the way up to 7, because 70 is our largest number. And notice the numbers are going to be in order. So the 9 is repeated twice, so you have to write them twice as leaves. Now, there is nothing beginning with a 1. There's something beginning with a 2. That's the 22, so that's why you have the 2 and the 2. Um, so for the 32, 33, 39, and 39, you see that it's written as a, the 3 is the stem. And the final digits 2, 3, 9, and 9 are written as the leaves. And so on and so on for the 42, 49. Uh, 52, 58, and there's nothing beginning with a 6, so that has no leaves. And the last one is a 7 and a 0. So that's your stem and leaf plot. Um, notice that when numbers, uh, I mean the leaves, when they're repeated, and the numbers are repeated, like 39 is repeated twice, uh, you still have to write the leaves, um, both the leaves, 9 and the 9. Right?